A four digit code is required to open a combination lock. The code must be even numbered and may not contain the digits 0 or 1. Digits may not be repeated. And then the first question, how many possible four digit combinations are there to open the lock? How many possible four digit combinations are there to open the lock? So let's look at the restrictions we have. We have digits from 2 to 9 because 0 and 1 cannot be used. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many digits? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The other condition that we have is that the code must be even numbered. What does that imply? If the last digit on the code is even, then the code itself is even numbered. So we need an even number to occupy the last spot. How many even numbers do we have? Well, 2 is even, 4 is even, 6 is even, and 8 is even. So we have 4 possible digits that can occupy the last spot. So we are choosing from 4. So out of the 8 digits that we have, we have used 1 on the last spot. Now we are left with 7 and no further conditions. So we have 7 possible digits that can occupy uh, the first spot. 6, 5. We have 840 possible 4 digit combinations. Let's look at 10.2.2. Calculate the probability that you will open the lock at the first attempt if it is given that the code is greater than 5000 and the third digit is true. The code is greater than 5000 and the third digit is true. Let's make sense of that. If the code is greater than 5000, then on the first position, we need 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. We need one between those five numbers. We say in only 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, She'll occupy that first spot. Now let's look at the other condition that we have. We must have two on the third spot. So here we have only one digit that can occupy that spot. We have two there. And then on the last spot, for our combination to be even numbered, the last spot must be occupied by an even digit. We need two to be on the third spot, so we cannot include it anymore. So we are only left with four, six, eight. If you saw the last video I did on probability, you will realize that we have a conflict of interest now. 6 and 8 can occupy both the first and the last spot. So we need to make calculations for when 5, 7 and 9 occupies the first spot and when 6 and 8 occupy the first spot. So let's go ahead and do that. We only do that when we have a conflict of interest like we do right now. So let's have 1, two three four if five seven and nine occupy the first spot then we are choosing one of the three and then on the last spot we are still going to have three digits on the third spot we have one digit that can occupy there which is two and then on the second spot of the eight digits we have used one two three so we are left with five this is when 5, 7, and 9 can possibly occupy the first spot. Let's look at the case when 6 and 8 occupy the first spot. When 6 and 8 occupy the first spot, we have two possible digits that can occupy the first spot. On the second spot, we're going to have five digits after we have satisfied everything else. On the third spot, we need two, so that is one digit. If 6 or 8 occupies the first spot, then on the last spot, we are only going to be left with two even digits. Let's say 6 occupied the first spot. Then we are left with 4 and 8. If 8 occupies the first spot, we are left with 4 and 6. So we have two possible digits that can occupy that last spot. Now it is just a matter of putting that in your calculator. And you should get 65. So the probability will be equals to 65 divided by the sample space our total possible combinations which is 840 
which will give you 0 0.08.